Good evening and welcome on this old show. My name is Patrick Kamara. The fight against corruption still continues in Uganda. In 1986, Pre President Yoweri Museven, when he came to power, he came with 10 points. He called it a 10-point program. And point number seven was about elimination of corruption, the fight against corruption. Almost 40 years down the road, it appears the challenge is even growing bigger. As we speak right now, a minister is serving in Luzira because of abuse of office. And yet there are so many agencies that are mandated to fight corruption. And tonight, my guest is the Inspector General of Government, Dionebo Betty Kamia. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening, Patrick, and good evening, dear viewers. Very exciting for me to be on this program once again. I love it, Patrick. Congratulations. Let me go to it straight away. You have cabinet ministers whose names right now are tainted because you could say they're accused of defrauding the vulnerable, stealing from the Karamojong of all people, taking away what is supposed to be for the Karamojong. We have a minister who is in Luzira right now. We have others perhaps who could be online to follow her in Luzira. You are supposed to be the person who is fighting corruption. How, 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 where do you see where Uganda is right now? I mean, it's tragic, Patrick, um, especially the current um, newsmaker, that is the Iron Sheet scandal. It is tragic uh, in many ways, but to answer your question, where, where, where are we now? I will say that when, when you start something and after a long time it doesn't go according to your plan, you go back to the drawing board. And I think after so many years, like uh, you said, so, uh, 30 or so many years, we've gone back to the drawing board. And we are re-evaluating our war strategy, the war against corruption. And our theory is that the war against corruption has been an elitist war. It's been fought or given to technocrats and civil society and diplomats and donors and government officials. It's been a very elitist war fought in boardrooms and five-star hotels with uh, AC rooms and European cities. That's where it has been fought. Such an elitist war is hard to win. So our new strategy, and I, I introduced it to His Excellency the President when we launched the lifestyle audit in, 2019, uh, in 2021, we were celebrating the anti-international an International Anti-Corruption Day, and I said we are changing the war strategy. We are going to make it a people-driven war. But I remember his comment was like, wait a moment, don't go that way. You no, seem not to have an ally actually, when it comes to life, what, like, like, lifestyle audit from the president. Because no, I remember that day, he seemed not to have welcomed your idea. No, to set the record straight, he said, be cautious, but he went along ahead and signed the, 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 the launch. He launched it. He, he signed the declaration and launched it. But he did say, be careful. I mean, like any war, if you go ahead on, sometimes you can uh, lose the battle. Be, be careful. Whom are you fighting? If you're fighting somebody very strong or somebody very cunning, you could lose the war. Honorable so Kamiya, be careful. Honorable Kamiya, Honorable Kamiya, allow me. I just want to... If anything, just paint a picture for somebody who's viewing right now. Mm. Because we're talking about cabinet ministers whose hands are tainted with, with, with allegations of graft. We're talking about stealing from the most vulnerable, mm. the Karamojong. You know, it gives a scar mm. on the conscious of the nation. We are together it's a national that. shame we are that together. people who are well paid, people who are supposed to be honorable, acting in a horrible way yes. to steal from the most vulnerable people of the, of the country. But you see what, Patrick, what I'm telling you is working. Because now that people are involved, it is someone, an ordinary person, who tipped Shaku and said, look, someone here is still is selling um, iron sheets, which are clearly marked 
not for sale or for Karamoja or for government of Uganda. It is somebody who tipped uh, an investigation agency. So the people are getting involved. And it's a good thing. It's not going to happen in one day, but the mere fact that people are so involved, I can tell you from where I'm sitting, people are getting involved. They're getting us so much information in institutions about people. If somebody had not tipped an ordinary person, had not told uh, 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 an investigation agent about this, we probably wouldn't even know that that means I'm seated here. So we are sitting here discussing this because an ordinary person decided to do something about it. But you it. know, there's only Honorable Gore Kitutu who could be right now in Luzira, but there are many people perhaps who need to be investigated a little more Absolutely. and probably could be candidates for, Luz for Luzira Absolutely. because if what is meant to be for Karamoja has gone somewhere else, either in Kibali or Bukedia or anywhere else, mm. then it still has a mistake that is supposed to be corrected. Absolutely. I wonder, I wonder how you're going to treat that because I have seen a letter where the president says, if somebody has taken government property and uses it for personal gain, that person should be prosecuted. That is theft. But how about those one who have taken government property and they have given them to institutions? Still, that is, is not, that is also illegal. You see, you have to unpack in this, uh, and, and, I, and I want to be, in this particular case of the Mabati, you really have to unpack a few things. One of the things is that there are actually six affirmative action ministries. The Minister of Karamoja, the Minister of Ruero, the Minister of Teso, the Minister of Bunyoro, the Minister of Disaster Preparedness, and the Ministry of Northern Uganda. Now, each of those ministries have a work plan. We've investigated that. And in their work plan, they had a budget for Mabati. So some of those ministries bought Mabati according to their work plans and their budgets. And they gave them to people within the communities for whom they were meant. Now, the issue is about people who took Mabati for in the case of Karamoja, the minister for Karamoja took Mabati for Karamoja but did not take them to Karamoja. She diverted them and worst still for commercial purposes and for well, nepotism. Well, well, I don't want to go back on the, go much on the issue of, of, of the Honorable Goret Kitutu yes. because that is she's facing a, a, a court case right oh, now. Yes, that's but right. there are all others who are still there. They have taken Mabati as well. That's they true. are not yet in court. And, and these are the ones that you need to investigate because they too have a case to answer, don't they? We are investigating them. Don't they have a serious case to answer? They do. We are investigating them. But for us in the Inspectorate of Government, we do what they call prosecution-led investigations, which means that we look for evidence that will stand in court. You can have a lot of hula baloo about a subject, but when you take it to court, the judge says, I need evidence that must be adduced beyond reasonable doubt. So my question is, if, some, if a government official has received, they are claiming to have received Mabati without their knowledge, and, Mabati, and they have continued, gone ahead to, to donate those, the, the iron sheets to institutions. They are, of it, course. Is that right? No, it's not right. Shouldn't, that be, shouldn't they be prosecuted? They should, but what, uh, that's what I'm telling you. The problem we face in prosecution is to adduce evidence beyond reasonable doubt. That is the challenge that we always face. And that is why people who are culpable, people who have committed crimes, get away. Because you have not structured your case properly, because you have not produced evidence that is beyond reason. I'll give you an example, uh, Patrick. If somebody calls my bodyguard or my PA or my driver and says come for Mabati and my driver goes and signs for them, you know, there's no evidence that I took Mabati because it's my driver who signed for them. You know, if I said no, I didn't take them, really it's my driver, then it is my driver. So, you know, in a court it's difficult. That's why we are, have to be very slow and very sure. But I assure you that the whole nation is outraged 
by this mabati thing but it's just a tip of the iceberg i'm telling you so now eventually if if there is no court case legally for them to answer but there is a political case right and tomorrow there is a so political how, how case. do you deal with that well, I, it, it's not my mandate to deal with the political issues. My mandate is to deal with the legal, legal issues. That's where my mandate takes me. That's why I'm telling you we do prosecution-led investigations. Of course, the political issues will be handled by the president, and he has promised to handle the political. Because in many cases, politically, people just resign, even if they are not culpable, but a sense of responsibility. I aired in my supervision role. That alone requires you to resign in many countries. That is a moral and a political uh, question. But a legal question ends in court or an order from the inspector of government which can be challenged in court unless you have impeccable evidence. Is it fair for the Honorable Goret Kitutu to be sitting alone in the coolers of Luzera? You know what they say in Luganda? There is a syndicate. Normally there is a syndicate of people. The one who is watching, the one who is uh, giving you to carry things, the one who is taking them to the car. Da, 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 da. But the one they catch is, the, is, is Yemubi. The others run away. So unfortunately for on, Honorable Goretti Kitutu, her case was... Uh, was uh, I think her, her case is so obvious. There is evidence. She wrote requisite. There is there's sufficient evidence to, to charge her. Well, I don't know. It's still a court case. But mm. So now, you know, you're dealing with the honorable ministers. You're dealing with members of cabinet who are facing all these uh, allegations of scandals. abuse or scandals of that nature. You know, it must be very difficult for the honorable Betty Kamia because... These, these are your colleagues. Just the other day, you're sitting in the same cabinet, and now allegations are, are you know, that they are facing are really wild. A job has to be done. I took oath, and if uh, the appointing authority saw in me the ability to rise beyond, not petty, real human issues, but a job has to be done, and I took oath, and I will do the job. So, I saw a tweet, I think was by one of the media stations in Kampala, uh, indicating that President Yoweri Museveni was sort of losing hope. In, in like, he has done everything he could, you know, putting up all these agencies to fight corruption, including the State House and Corruption Coalition, we have the Inspectorate of Government, you have CID, you have all these people. But again, like a monster, it is still survives. Even when you, feel you, you think you have killed it, it raises from the dust like the phoenix of Egypt. But so it looks like he's given up. No, he shouldn't give up. Patrick, I just told you what the problem was, that we made it an elitist war. But we have to turn around and make it a people's war. It's not going to happen in a day. We're not going to win the war in a day. But what I'm sure of, now that it's a people's war, we are in the right direction. We shall win the war. It's going to be painstaking. But that means even you, sir, who is listening to me, you've got to get involved in this war. Be your neighbor's keeper. Like this person who saw the Mabati in Namisindwa and ran somewhere and said. Like the whistleblowers who bring us information. That's what the, the, the people's war is supposed to be. But, uh, but are you actually certain that it was an ordinary Ugandan who was a whistleblower? Because what we hear in Kampala, that it was also uh, somebody high up in office who actually became a whistleblower. Yeah, even those the are... Peers, or, uh, to that extent. But we have whistleblowers. We have, uh, uh, sitting in my office, we have ordinary people who are, who don't even, who are whistleblowers. Some don't even give their names. Some give their names. They are just ordinary people. And they can tell you, so and so has, is building uh, 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 so many houses, six houses. And we go and check them out. We have done it. At one point, you released, I think, a study that we are losing almost 10 trillion yes. sh shillings. Mm. And was that per year? Yes, it's per year. 10 trillion shillings per year is mm. like, is like a, almost a quarter of Uganda's budget. Absolutely, through yes. Through corruption. Mm. That same money, Honorable Kamia, can actually be it's used. It's not actually a quarter. 
about for, for our revenue is about 44 yes. percent of our revenue not the budget because there's budget support revenue, yes, revenue. but our uh, uh, domestic revenue yes it's about 44 percent so if 44 percent of what we are able to collect is wasted through corruption mm. that money can actually be used by the corrupt officials to insulate themselves mm. or even cause insecurity mm. to the country you know you're dealing with people who have lots of money yes and that money can be used can be deployed to protect themselves that is true but when you see i mean it the study went further and uh, and uh, showed ways in which it is lost and among the ways in which it is lost is under declaration or or non-declaration of taxes, utility user fees, uh, malpractices in the procurement processes, and you know, 60 percent of government business is procurement, and then uh, inflation of the government payroll, all the schools, all the hospitals, all the government payrolls have got ghost uh, soldiers, things like that. So that's that's how where the money is. Uh, yeah, what, well, is if, getting if you explain but like, the if you explain it that like that, then it means that corruption has permeated Absolutely. almost to every sector of society yes because 10 trillion mm. almost 45 percent of ugandans of the locally generated revenue mm. that's a lot of money that almost it touches almost every everybody that's true so how, where do you start to fight and where do you end <sighs> patrick that's the question but we must start we must i mean look at um, all the words that have been that, that were fought beginning with the war that was fought by President Museveni, that were a war. You know, how anybody, uh, I remember uh, Dr. Bote said, called them scouts and laughed so hard, those scouts in the bush. So with the determination, you start somewhere, you'll get where you want to go. So now, with a good strategy, war strategy. So now, what have you been doing lately and, and, and what is the prospect that you, you think uh, you're gonna leave a legacy of the people who now have a sense of, 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 of integrity that is uh, impeccable? Well, first of all, our mandate as enshrined in the Constitution, the first item is to ensure strict adherence to the rule of law or to foster strict adherence to the rule of law. Many people think that our mandate is to fight corruption. But you know corruption is a product. Corruption is a product that happens at the end of a story that begins with disrespect for the rule of law. So if we start from the right place, foster strict adherence to the rule of law, then that is prevention. There will not be corruption at the end. So while we must continue, to fight corruption because it is real, we are also focusing a lot on prevention. Prevention through advocacy, through um, education, through community mobilization. This community mobilization. We want people to fear to build a house in their villages because the neighbor will ask, can your salary afford that house? When the neighbor, even your own children should start asking, People should start thinking. But if you want to hide your corruption, we want to make it to give you so much, make it so hard, because everybody should be asking, can your salary do that? Can your salary afford that? That is the question. The, that's what we are so doing. So it appears, so it appears that you are looking at having a people with high moral standing in a country that can be able to... Actually, not high moral standing. Yeah, because who is going to stand and start asking for questions about whoever is putting no, no, up no. a building? Patrick, it's not people of high moral standing, but it is people who will own the war because they now know that they are the victims of corruption. It's not about moral standing. It is about stealing from me because if I, I, I look to, into our society want, i look into if, uh, our if, leaders of faith themselves religious leaders with all respect they too seem to have lost the the, the moral study our our approach is different the corrupt have been called to come and stand near the pulpit give a word to the people who will be telling ugandans our approach to, patrick mm -hmm. is different our approach is to make people angry that they are stealing from me I am telling people, if you go to Morago and you 
your person dies there because there's no medicine, it is probably because your neighbor is the one who stole money for medicine and is coming to you now to help you buy a coffin. And you're saying he's a good man because he's brought me 500,000 to buy a coffin when he's the real murderer. A mindset change of the people. We want people to start questioning everything. So in that quest of uh, building the capacity of people to start questioning, to, to be on the lookout, are you, are you increasingly be able to see that happening among the Ugandan population? And that's how, that, that's how it's happened everywhere. You know, in European countries or developed countries, almost everybody is a state spy. Looking at their neighbors, everybody is a state spy. You just look over your neighbor's window and he's cutting down a tree in his garden, which he shouldn't cut, they call police. You're beating your child, you're holding somebody, which you shouldn't do, they call the police. Everybody is their neighbor's keeper. And that is the mindset that we want to bring in the minds or in the, in the hearts of, of Ugandans. But for, Uganda, for the Ugandan masses, more importantly, to realize that they are victims. Whatever, the lack of jobs, what we are teaching them, the lack of jobs, the lack of medicine in the hospital, the bad roads, Anything you don't like in this country, it is because a few people, not more than 200,000, are stealing your taxes. So we are, we are charging up people to be angry and decide to do something about it. And what they need to do is simple, just report. Your so neighbor. We, so how, how about the witness protection? Well, I mean, a whistleblower protection. There's a parliament. Because somebody may do that and then, you know, a big man who has, has money or big women, uh, uh, that endangers their lives. How do you protect them? The whistleblower. First of all, whistleblower is not supposed to declare themselves. Here I am, I'm, I'm going to report to you. You're not even supposed to know. Only I am supposed to know, or the person they're telling is supposed to know, and the act requires me not to disclose that person at all. That is the act. Of protection but the whistleblower does not need to go and uh, announce themselves and I'm telling you especially the junior not even middle managers but the junior managers in public institution they have so much information A, an assistant they call them assistant accountant ac accounts assistant whose job is the bank agent whose job it is to go get money from the bank the check has been signed or by the, the, the PS or the, the principal accountant. This person who goes and, and signs for the check, for the money, gives the money to the boss, but he knows that the money didn't do any work there. You know, he knows because he brought the money, and I have a case actually. He brought the money, gave it to the boss, but the work was not done. So when we went to investigate, we got this man who got the money from the bank. And he said, Mr. So-and-so, I so give it to him. In this, in this fight of trying to, you know, empower the people to, to be able to be on the lookout, to, to have what you call, can I even call it holy anger, to be angry mm. in, in a good way. Angry, with, please be, be angry, angry people. Do, do, you, do you have allies in the government? Do you have allies, for example, in the cabinet? You know... Do, do you find the executive as a good ally? To, yes, I think with so. what is happening right now? In yes, the corruption? yes, because, and I'll tell you why. Wherever we have been, when I went to, uh, uh, I took this job with my colleagues, we found the budget was like, um, I think, 53 percent, 53, 53 billion per year for your for, for your for the institution, for the institution of the IG. So we went and made a case and explained to Minister of Finance and Secretary of Treasury and. Uh, president and everybody, and they increased our budget by 48%. In the middle, almost, uh, just towards the budget year, and I think we are the only institution whose budget was increased by 48%. And when it went to parliament, you know the budget that we also explained to them, and you know sometimes they reallocate, they cut here and there, they didn't cut. Parliament even added. So we are getting a lot of uh, moral support and goodwill and goodwill that's what i was looking for and goodwill th to, from parliament 
and from the executive as well. So I would say that with increased awareness and, and campaign uh, explaining our case and what we need to do and why, why we should get more money, that is good will. So they've given you money in billions of Uganda shillings, but we are losing trillions. Not enough. Yeah, not enough, but mm. they've given you billions of Uganda shillings in, mm. to run the institution, mm. but we are losing trillions. Yes. What have you recovered? We have recovered. I will show. I will tell you that in one, um, in uh, almost six months, we, we recovered twenty. Tw in one year, we recovered about thirty billion. About thirty billion, not much, but a very good start from where we are coming from. So, in this case, in this case, when you recover, it, it, give us a, some kind of a scenario. Recovering thirty billion is is a step, but how do you recover that money? You sell some people's. People do actually return the money and stay on the job? Do you sell their property? How do you recover it? It depends. It's a case by case. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it really, it's, it depends on what it is. Sometimes you prosecute them, but sometimes, you know, prosecution, like I said, a prosecution led investigation means that you almost have to go a hundred percent investigation. It is very costly. And the, the, what happens in court, I will tell you that the, the um, conviction rate was about 35%. It has gone up to about 46%, the conviction rate. Yes. Not to mention the time it takes. It could take anything up to three, four years in, in court. So now we are going more for recovery. Recovery. Um, we, 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 we recover or we order you to recover, we attach your property. Some people have brought, uh, we have confiscated people's property. You must have seen... And, and some people have brought back the real money. Are, are there such cases? <laughs> yes, they have. They have. So when somebody brings back the money, government money, mm. to, to state coffers, do they retain their positions of... of, 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 of over. Normally, like I said, it's a case by case okay. uh, scenario. Sometimes it goes with the uh, sanctions, like uh, resign, forced to resign. Sometimes a demotion. Sometimes, yes, they keep their the money. But let me tell you something: to be forced to bring back a billion or five hundred million is not a joke. It means that you almost have to sell everything you have. You know, so people think it's not punitive enough. But I've seen people weep because they've had to sell everything they have. You know, one, one, one issue I've heard is that we have so many agencies, so many institutions mandated to fight corruption. And of course, they give you a budget, give you a lot of money, you do your job. But we don't recover as much. So there's a hemorrhage of public resources in corruption. There's True. a hemorrhage of public resources in running the institutions that are not giving us back the return. True. That's why I'm saying uh, recovery is not so much that can save us as prevention. And prevention through fear, making corruption very risky. You know, I think that is a more sustainable strategy than going after. Because like I said, recovery through court, you have the, the, the amount of resource that you use to investigate a case and prosecute it successfully. I mean, the resource you need is maybe more than the resource you are trying to recover. So what is more sustainable is the strategy we are using of making it a very risky business. I know you're very passionate about the lifestyle audit. And yes. When you came to office, that's what you started with. And uh, the last time I think you, I saw you in northern Uganda talking about the same. So where do we stand on the life, life, lifestyle audit? Are people declaring? People um, so far, and we shall come out with a, with a report very soon, but we closed the declaration exercise on the 31st of March, as we said, and in Prince, in, 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 um, on the whole, we got about a 77% compliance. Okay. And, uh, and how does that compare with the, the previous uh, declaration? It's better. Okay. It's much improved, but because of awareness also, there's much more. I think we've created more. We put a lot of uh, um, effort in uh, 
in sensitization and, uh, and, and awareness. But most of the people that, m most of the, uh, um, the ministries, the parliament, the, they have all almost declared 100%. But there are, few there are some people, like in the district's local government, who didn't do very well. I don't know whether it's a, something to do with awareness or whatever it is, but we got 77% compliance. And those that didn't comply, of course, the law will take its course. Well, well, there's, there's a saying that when hunters start learning to shoot without missing, also the birds are running, flying without patching. Mm. Ugandans can also adapt. You bring this, they can do another. Mm. How do you tell that what they have declared is actually, that's all they have, mm. and for the proper that is around, uh, maybe it's in the, in the name of somebody, mm. how do you actually go behind to verify what they have given you and that they have it left out? Um, we we'll take a sample, for instance. You declare two houses, but I walk through the government hub and talk to Minister of Lands and talk to Uganda Revenue Authority and talk to URSB and talk to the, the utility providers. That, those are the people you do business oh. with. So, who, because nowadays the system is, is the system is, is integrated. Is integrated. We talk to financial intelligence agency, and others know somehow they know your business, what you're doing. If you if you registered a business, you uh, URSB will know. If you didn't declare it, if you registered two houses, whereas you, uh, Uganda, I mean Ministry of Lands has uh, four houses, then I will know. So the system, I think the system is getting better and better integrated. And the more digital we go, it will be easier because it will be on a click of a so button. So when, you, when you find somebody has left out a property, mm. so what do you do? It's an offense. It's called under declaration or false declaration. Under the law, the Leadership Code Act, it's an offense and it is uh, punishable. There are many uh, sanctions, including loss of work, including demotion, including um, penalties, depending on the reason. You could be in coma, for instance. I'm We're told not Ugandan to. public officials are investing in Dubai, investing in Nairobi, they're investing in Namibia and Botswana. Mm. So how do you follow that kind of money? True, but Uganda is now um, a, 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 a signatory to almost all the conventions, regional, and international conventions. So if, and we just did it recently actually. If I need to find out about uh, Patrick, I know that I've heard that he has a house in, in uh, Dubai. I just call the equivalent. Uh, in, uh, there, there's a network. There's a regional and international network that can give information on the spot. So what kind of workforce do you have to be able to verify the declarations of 70% of public officials you're interested in because you need to have an army of people to work with. Do you have them? That is true. No, we don't have them. And we don't even do 100% declaration. We do we, we sample though. But it's good for us to keep the record. It may work for you or against you as long as I have your personal declaration. I have your personal declaration. And sometimes, you know, people come and they're fighting over property. Say husband and wife, they're fighting over property and you didn't declare this or you declared tough and then your wife, your wife is in court declaring many others and uh, it, then we find out that actually you didn't declare. So it, it's a record that government needs to keep. In what you're trying to do in raising the awareness and telling Ugandans to have that anger, to be able to, to, to know that... Uh, you, ho holy anger, you made <laughs> it right. You, you yeah. said so well. But, but it's as if you really want to raise, you know, you know like a movement of people that, that are, are aware. And, and, and there seems to be matters that at a family level, mm. because we seem to have lost it almost at the grassroots, at the family level. And, and for you, as, as the, an IGG, to say that you're going to touch everybody and, and build that uh, groundswell of resistance from people who are, can be, uh, have that awareness, looks to be a very Hachurian task. 
a very big task. Yes, well, but it has to be done and it has to be started. And as they say, even the journey of a thousand miles begins with one foot. So what I'm doing, I may not be the one to finish it, but what I'm doing is redirecting the course of the war from the elite, from it being an elitist war. And the elitist war is just like a club. Most people who are supposed to be fighting the war are perpetrators, are beneficiaries, are, you know, they, they, they are paid, they are mercenaries, you know, like they, they are paid to be IGG, whatever, all those other agencies, they are sitting in the offices with government vehicles and it is not their pain. So the pain, that's why people must own the war, because it is their pain. They must understand that. So what I'm doing is redirecting the focus on the war. Whose war? That is the answer that people must understand. And then get involved. We seem to, most of the time, put the focus on, on the politicians and the leaders. But actually, they are not, in most cases, they are not the ones handling the money. That's true. People who are handling the money are different, not politicians. That is true. So uh, how, what do you make of, the, for example, if we go back to the issue of the Mabati, the, the distribution mechanism, mm. because it shouldn't even be an MP or a minister to be handling iron sheets. The first how people should, to... How should the, the vulnerable, who are supposed to get relief, get that relief? Because we hear it's on a, gov in a, gov a minister's vehicle, being transported by the minister, or something like that, yet that shouldn't be the, 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 the infrastructure to use... No, it shouldn't ...to, to be. distribute government property. That means there's a weakness at the technical level, because the technical person Minister can only make a policy and uh, maybe call a top management meeting and you take decisions. And the implementers are, t are the technocrats. So it's totally out of order for the minister to take uh, Mabati themselves. Under normal circumstances, uh, for the vulnerable people who are supposed to, relieve, to receive relief item, how, how, what should be the channel? Who should be handling these things last with the common person? Is it the subcounty chief? Is it the, chief, the, the cow? Is it the LOC 5 chairperson? How should it be moving? Because... Really, I, I, because at, um, I, I don't know, but the techno, the techno, the, the channel should be through the technocrats. And I don't know how far down. I think before it was up to the Gombolola, the subcounty level. But now that we are doing... Um, parish development model, I think that business is being brought down to the parish, where it will be the parish chief then. But it should be through the technocrats, certainly not the politicians. There seems because to be a problem with the procurement, distribution chain of, of government of government uh, items. Yeah, and because I think... People are not supposed to be, even to be handling the actual items, they, they end up handling them. Yes, because I think many people are benefiting from the chaos. Uh, because many people, I'm sure, are benefiting from the chaos. I'm sure if you went to the stores there, you'd find even more chaos because of all these uh, pieces of paper flying around, give so and so, give so and so, you know, that leaves a lot of uh, room for the storekeeper also to, to do what they want. I, I just want to go back to the issue of the iron sheets because it is what is in the news right now. Uh, of course, one minister is, is being uh, is is in court. So, do you wait for the others who have, have allegations, who are facing allegations, to be prosecuted in court, or even yourself? You are investigating them, and also you you cause prosecution for them. You see what we are doing, mm -hmm. because um, Parliament in, did investigations, State House did invest uh, uh, did investigations, and State House was the first person get involved, we have broadened our focus on the entire relief program for the past two financial years. So as the Inspectorate of Government, we, we have uh, broadened our, our, our area of investigation. It's about relief, management of the relief function for the past two financial years. So it will be deep, it will be broad. So when you shed a light into into what you have brought in and you want to see into it. Mm -hmm. What kind of rot do you see? Is it totally rotted? Yes, unfortunately it is. Unfortunately it is because billions, billions of shillings. I mean, 
I don't even know what to say. It is, it is rotten. You seem to have a sense of frustration on yourself. <laughs> about the, 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 the enormous the work that there is, mm. the rot that you see, mm. and the mm. people continue to work, and uh, some of them pretending that they are serving uh, the people of Uganda, but yet they are not. Mm. I think everybody is frustrated, but we have a job to do. Amidst um, constraints, serious constraints, but there is a job to do, and we shall do the job. Apart from creating awareness from Ugandans, what other things do you need? That, what kind of help do you need? Because I know the, the enormity of the job and the, the, what is required. You want to raise awareness from Ugandan, but mm. what else do you want? Actually, that's the most important thing, to raise awareness and to, to create um, a sense of responsibility, a sense of ownership, a sense of anger, holy anger. I'll take that from you. A sense of that holy anger. If we can achieve that, that will be... You know, sometimes you're driving a car and somebody says, a motor car fe. You know, people have started owning things. So that's before, I come, they used to say, motor car government, but motor cars are government. But now they say, motor car fe. So slowly by slowly, by people beginning you know, to take you know, ownership. On Ginger Road, somebody was driving with their siren and the convoy, mm -hmm. and, and the border border guy mm -hmm. said, you give way to the, to the Mabati thief. <laughs> 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 so it... And, and I'm, I'm told it was uh, just a, it's somebody, it's a, a hawker <laughs> who's carrying things. Yes. You tell uh, his fellow walk, hawkers mm, that give, give away to the about the thing. Uh, you you know, it could be, uh, I, I don't it's know. It's terrible, uh, isn't but, it? But perhaps that's the anger you're creating. Yes, among yes, people. yes. People must be, there's another one who composed the song. <laughs> you know, it was a, somebody composed the song. It was like, if I don't have food, if I, I, I just need to let me just see the body since I can get out with it. You know, so people are beginning to, you know, But, to, but don't you also own. run a risk because Ugandans are angry, Ugandans are hurting, they feel they're on the war, and, 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 and if public officials like you are saying you need to get angry, then they could actually take it to another level and that could be worse. They should, they should, uh, our message is to take their anger through, we are also telling them how to handle their anger by telling us, because we are telling people, you have the information, I have the instruments of authority. I mean, if you see a man building a hotel or marrying two wives and building for them houses and he built his mother house, he just got a job one year ago, there's nothing you can do about it. But if you tell me, I have instruments of authority to ask him to explain how he got that money. So we are building a partnership between us with the instruments of authority and them with the information and the, the, being the victims with the information. And this answers your question of the lifestyle audit. The lifestyle audit is designed to be a partnership between us who have authority and the people who have information. Because seated here in Kampala, in the office of the IGG, I do not know what Patrick is doing in, in, in Fort Porto. But your neighbor in Fort Porto knows. In Chenjuju. In Chenjuju. Yes. <laughs> your neighbor in Chenjuju knows. Mm -hmm. So I give him my call center number and we connect. He has information. I have instruments of authority. So I can come to Chenjuju, pick up Patrick and ask him to explain. So we are building this partnership. They must understand. It, but the reality that's how it in must most work. cases on the ground is that people celebrate their own, especially when that one of theirs uh, is able to get a mass I well, know, in I a know, short time. I know. They think you're a, you're, a, you're, a you're a successful person. I know, but that's the mindset we are changing. And when you take time, mm. like some of us taking time to do something, that is the mindset. Not, then, then somebody says, look at them. Mm. The other guy has done it so fast. True. So that is, that's, that's, that, that's the population I'm going to contend with. I know. Let me tell you something, Patrick. Somebody, uh, uh, one friend of mine uh, told me, who is actually a minister, he said when he went to his village, his elsewhere chairman said, now you ministers, if you started stealing Mabati, what will I, chairman of elsewhere, steal? Meaning you are supposed to steal bigger <laughs> things bigger things so we have a lot of work to work on the mindset on the mindset to know that stealing is stealing whatever is stealing public trust is what is being uh, violated public trust 
any act of dishonesty. And there are a lot of things too. You are looking at this Mabati Patrick. People are selling jobs, you know. So meritocracy is seriously threatened by people who give jobs based on political patronage, on, uh, on fake certificates from NASA, on uh, money, on sex. So they give somebody who is a mediocre and then the one with merit takes a plane and goes to, to Europe and Ugandans are out there. So that's another very serious area that needs to be addressed. I want to thank you so much, Honorable Betty, for coming here on this show for the time you've given us. But what's going to be your concluding remark tonight? My concluding remark is, fellow countrymen, own this war. This is, can only be won if it is a people's war and if you appreciate that you are the victims of corruption. Not government, you as an individual. You are the victim of corruption. And so, own the war and get involved in fighting corruption. You don't have to throw stones. All you have to do is to report information to the inspectorate of government. We have the authority to deal with it. I want to thank you so much for the time you have given us. At least we know that you have told us the job is big, but you are equally tough, the job, uh, ready to face it. Thank you. And uh, you are ending on a very optimistic note that is doable and that uh, a journey of a thousand miles begins the step and the IGG has taken the first step. And including you, the people of Uganda, if you can get that anger of reporting what you think is very suspicious to them, for those who have the authority, they will try to investigate and maybe come to the logical conclusion of whatever that case will be. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick. Good night and God bless you.